setting up, getting ready for a presentation, and I use my laptop. Hello, members only. So this is what I do. Um, usually I would have a green screen or I will be on this side over here. I'm scared to turn this thing because the camera's not steady, but I will usually either be over here behind my uh, dining room table with the green screen behind me, or sometimes I'm in my living room with the whole setup, like a studio. But today, uh, I'm just going to say a few words, but the rest of it is going to be, you know, a screen share. So this is what I do, this is how I do it, and I want to do more of these videos to let you know how uh, Bud Browns does what he does. And let me also turn this light on, I hope I don't screw anything up when I do. Alrighty. Alright, so, let me get this video going. And it's for more or less be two different views of me explaining a situation. Uh, let me close all these pages. Now before I start, what I'm going to be discussing today is the demystifying of firearms and gun ownership. There's a, a huge stigma as to what can be done and what can't be done. And this looks a little crooked. Forgive me, folks. Yeah, people don't understand their rights and what is available to them. So I'm going to attempt to pull back the veil, so to speak. All right? So we're in Zoom. You can see that. Didn't open up yet. Let's open it up now. Oh, it is Marshall Enterprises. Okay. I was talking to my members only. So this recording you're going to hear on the members only uh, section, but it won't be played on the regular video. All right. So this is a Marshall Enterprises presentation. Hello, hello, hello. Peace, everybody. Peace, peace, peace. And I need to elevate this video. Got to excuse me. I'm doing things a little different this morning or today. A little different. Okay. And if you see me look to my left, that's because I am recording for members only. Now, the purpose of me coming to you this morning, it is 8.51 a.m., is to begin to demystify firearm ownership, gun ownership, what have you. Now, let me start this by saying this isn't a an attack or me going after anybody at all when I say what I'm going to say. There are individuals teaching information, whether it be public or private, and the position that they're coming from is from a position of I say reactive. Some individuals have done time. Some individuals may have uh, sort of a rap sheet. It may not be long. It could be long. And the position or the direction in which they have to take is because of their criminal history or their arrest history or their situation. 
Now, there's a lot of us that are similar to me that do not have a criminal record at all. I've been arrested twice, but they have not, or well, the one time has been recorded or have been documented. The other time was just bogus because I got picked up in a, in a, a swarm, like the officers conveyed upon my, not conveyed, but they swarmed upon my apartment complex and at the time I was walking to a payphone, I didn't have my wallet or anything on me. I even had slippers on. So they arrested me for trespassing. Anyway, so I only have two arrests, one on record. And the second arrest was unlawful disposal of a summons. I was driving home from work one morning, Easter morning, and an officer pulled me over because my headlights was on. Or, I'm sorry, windshield wipers was on, the headlights wasn't on. And in New York State, that's the law. When your headlights is on, when your windshield wipers on, your headlights have to be on. Who knew? See, you just learned something. But um, several things happened between me and the officer in which he throws the tickets and my license at me and I just, you know, drop it out the window. He commenced to, you know, step it up and I get arrested that day. Charges dismissed later. But. So, I don't have a lengthy criminal record. I don't have any issue with domestic violence. I don't have an issue with uh, any mental issues, what have you. So, I would not have a problem obtaining a firearm permit again. I've already been armed earlier in my uh, young life. I was 25, I believe, when they gave me a license to carry in New York City. Now, again, let me emphasize, the route in which some people take is predetermined on their history. So if they have a criminal record, if they have a criminal history, then the path that they're going to take is going to be different from someone that does not have a criminal history. That's similar to someone that is not a bastard. I've, went, I've, I've done that video and I've explained in detail how my parents were married prior to me being born. So your status is different if you're not a bastard. And that's not me being derogatory towards anybody. This is legal terminology. Look up the term bastard. Either in a, look in a regular dictionary, then look in a legal dictionary. You'll see what I mean. So my parents were married. So that has a an effect on your status. Your parents' status has an effect on your status. But this is about demystifying firearm and gun ownership. So I want to show you some things. Bring it to your attention. Excuse me. I might have to sneeze in a minute. I mean. To excuse me in advance. Um, I want to bring certain things to your attention that you may not know. For instance, in New York City, there is a target permit. There's a premise permit. You know, there's concealed carry permit. There's um, uh, range, uh, not range. Uh, I believe there's a rifle and shotgun permit. And, well, there's hunting licenses too. But, there are different permits of which you can apply for as long as you don't fall under that category those categories which I'll list I may I may you know leave a small window somewhere maybe I'll do it right here I'll leave a small window of information here of if you have these things this video is not for you so if you've had a criminal history if you've had well, not, criminal history does not actually disqualify you. It depends on what is in that criminal history. However, once you go for fingerprinting and a, 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 a yellow or red flag comes up, you're going to have to now uh, jump over additional hurdles to, ob to obtain, to achieve that permit or that license. But if you have no issues, it's going to be a straight sprint. Now, I'm going to move on and share my screen and this will maybe be the last you'll see of me 
but I'm going to move on and share my screen and show you exactly what permits are available, what you need to do. I'm going to start in New York, I'm going to move to New Jersey, and then I'll touch on Pennsylvania because I'm familiar, I'm very familiar with these three states. And I think you're going to need this information. I really do. What I'm not going to do, I apologize in advance, is I'm not going to show you the weapons in my possession. Uh, for reasons of you do not want to be a target, for reasons of you don't want to let an enemy know exactly what you're holding type thing. So if you would like to know what is good for you to have, what should you have, then let's have a conversation so I can give you my personal opinion, my professional opinion on what you should uh, look into, what you should be utilizing, what you should be carrying, what you should have. And very interesting point is if you live in an apartment complex where you have the steel and the cement structure, a shotgun is perfect for that situation and a certain shotgun round I'll explain is good for that situation because it won't pass through the walls if you're in a home private home if you're in a two-family home etc things of that nature if you're in a trailer you know what is the best weapon for your defense if you're in a home, if you're in a trailer park, a rifle might be okay, but you got to consider what's beyond your target. So if someone's coming to your front door or you know breaking in your front door and you're allowed to protect your castle, your home, defend your home, if you blast them and let's say you miss or let's say you hit him but it's excessive uh, metal shrapnel projectiles pass him or her and go through the door or go through the wall will it hit something on the other side of that so you got to take these things into consideration when you are uh, purchasing and utilizing these weapons for defense alright so you don't want to get sued by your neighbors for damaging their television their, their car or what have you you want to make sure you stop the threat but you don't cause any other harm or injury to anyone else. And keep in mind, if you have a small child in the next apartment, the next, not apartment, but the next uh, house, the next trailer home, you don't want to injure any children. So you want to really consider keeping your projectiles in your vicinity and not exceeding your four walls, six walls, eight walls, whatever, all right? So these are a lot of things that you need to consider, but this is about demystifying, letting you know what's out there that you can apply for, that you can get, if you do not have any of those issues that are listed right here, all right? So let's get into it. And you're going to see everything. You're not. <laughs> I'm going to keep you rolling as I go through the stuff, all right? So let's get into it. This one is going to pause. Okay, members only. I have changed locations. I'm at my main PC now, and I'm going to continue with the video. So let me share my screen. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go over the, or we're going to continue demystifying the firearms, permits, applications, etc. So first thing we're going to do is, I'm going to go backwards. If you go to, let me keep going back as far as I came. If you go into Google or you go into DuckDuckGo, which I use um, private browsers, 
go into DuckDuckGo or Google and put in NYC premise permit. And it will bring you to this page. You click this link. And now it brings you into NYPD's website or New York City's website, but the police department section. Inside the police department section, you're going to see permits and licensing. Go down to firearms licensing. In firearms licensing, let's read this to you guys. Firearms licensing, subject to limited exceptions. Possession of a handgun or rifle shotgun in New York City requires a license for handguns or a permit for rifles and shotguns issued by NYPD License Division. I'm sorry, let's read that again. Subject to limited exceptions, possessions of a handgun or rifle shotgun in New York City requires a license for handguns or a permit for rifles and shotguns. So you need a license for a handgun, you need a permit for rifles and shotguns issued by the NYPD License Division. As of January 1st, 2018, the NYPD License Division will only be accepting online applications for handgun licenses, rifle shotgun permits, and renewals. At the NYPD permitting and licensing public, public portal, and I'll show you, and renewals at the NYPD permitting and licensing public portal. Applications on paper will no longer be accepted. To access the portal and learn more about applying online on the computer for a handgun license or a rifle shotgun permit, visit and they give you the link. Now it's telling you about when the division is open, da 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 da, information and the telephone numbers. We don't need all that. We're going to just click this link and go right on in. Now we're into the NYPD license division. It's giving you the COVID-19 precautions, yada, yada, yada. You're going to scroll down to new application instructions. Okay, click that. And the new applications instructions, let's just read a little bit of this. But we already read that um, they're only doing online applications, so we don't have to read that. Current and former licensee of permit holders, uh, you don't need to read that one. Here we go down to the overview of handgun license and rifle shotgun permit online application process. Number one, determine the type of license or permit for which you would like to submit an application. And here are the different types. A premise residence, a premise business, a carry business, a carry guard of security, limited carry, gun custodian, retired law enforcement officer, special carry, or rifle shotgun permit. All right, so you probably didn't know a lot of these things existed. You just thought, oh, I'm going to get a concealed weapon permit, or I'm just going to give me a carry license. It, it, it's so many different aspects of licenses in different categories, all right? Now, two, be aware of eligibility requirements set forth in federal, state, and local law. Some of the main requirements are that you must be at least 21 years of age, of good moral character, and not in a condition, mental or physical, that would make it unsafe for you to possess a firearm. A background check is conducted in which numerous factors are considered, included but not limited to, any history of arrest, summonses, domestic violence, orders of protection, mental illness, mental physical conditions, and any medical conditions taken in connection with therewith. <clears throat> Relevant statutes and rules include, but are not limited to, New York State Penal Law Section 400, Title 18 of the U.S. States Code, Sections 921 and 922, Title 10 of the New York City Administrative Code, Section 301, and sections immediately, immediately thereafter, and Title 38 of the Rules of the City of New York, particularly Chapters 3 and 5. And it tells you about the other requirements, et cetera, et cetera. We don't need to go into all of that. But now, let's go down to license and permit types. Now, this is for New York City, for those that came in late. <clears throat> The NYPD issues several different types of handgun licenses with varying restrictions. The information below will help you determine which type of handgun license is appropriate for you. Premise license. This is a restricted type of license. It is issued for your residence or business. The licensee may possess a handgun only on the premise of the address indicated on front of the license. Licensee may also transport their handguns and ammunition in separate lock containers directly to and from an authorized range or hunting location. For hunting, an endorsement from NYPD License Division is required. 
in addition to a New York State hunting license. Handguns must be unloaded while being transported. That's the premise license. Carry business license. This license permits the carrying of a handgun concealed on the person. It is valid for the business name, address, and handguns listed on the license. It is not transferable to any person, business, occupation, or address without the written approval of the licensed division's commanding officer. This license may be also issued for safety reasons unrelated to business. Limited carry business license. This is a restricted type of license. The licensee may only carry handguns indicated on the license in accordance with the specific limitations limited thereon. At all other times, the handgun must be safeguarded within the confines of the address listed on the front of the license and either concealed on the licensee's person in a proper holster or stored unloaded in a locked safe. That's the limited carry business license. Moving now to the special carry license. The special carry license is valid for business name, address, and handguns listed on the license. Only while the licensee has in his possession a valid carry county license issued according to the provision of Article 400 of New York State Penal Law, upon revocation, suspension, or cancellation of the basic county license, the special carry license is rendered void and must be immediately returned to the license division. For retired law enforcement officers who wish to apply for a special carry handgun license, follow the instructions listed below. Instructions for law enforcement, non-NYPD retirees who reside out of New York City. That was for the special carry. Now we're going down to the carry guard license. This is one I had. Carry uh, security guards, etc. This is a restricted type of license. Application for this type of license must be made with the documentation provided by a company's gun custodian. It is issued only for the handgun listed on the license. The handgun may be carried on only while the licensee is, is actively engaged in employment for the company whose name appears on the license, license and or while licensee is in transit directly to or from residence and place of employment. At all of the times, the handgun must be stored unloaded in a locked container at either the address on the license or at the employee's legal residence within the state of New York. That's for the carry guard license. Next is the rifle shotgun permit. This permit is issued for the possession and purchase of rifles and shotguns. It's a rifle and shotgun permit. It's the most easiest permit to get in the United States. That's an exaggeration, but you know, I'm sarcastic at times. Rifle shotgun permit. This permit is issued for the possession and purchase of rifles and shotguns. New York will let you get this pretty easy, okay? Law enforcement retiree license. This type of license is for retired law enforcement officers, okay? So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You have the different types of licenses, what is available to you, and according to your status, your history, it will determine on what license you can apply for <clears throat> and qualify for. If you have a legal business in New York, you may be able to apply for a carry business. So keep these things in mind, read through it and see which one applies for you and apply, okay? So that is for New York. We're gonna close these windows as we move on to the next state. Or also, let me go to another site that's gonna give you a little bit of information. It's called Guns to Carry. A lot of these sites give very good information. If you go straight to the statutes and codes that was just listed and then NYPD, let me go back there real fast. They had them listed here. The relevant statutes and, and codes. If you look at um, penal law section 400, Title 18, you know, these different, if you go directly to these stat, these statutes and codes or the ordinances, you'll get the, the, the you go, it's the most easiest permit to get in the United States. That's an exaggeration, but you know, I'm sarcastic at times.
Rifle shotgun permit. This permit is issued for the possession and purchase of rifles and shotguns. New York will let you get this pretty easy. Okay? Law enforcement retiree license. This type of license is for retired law enforcement officers. Okay? So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You have the different types of licenses, what is available to you, and according to your status, your history, it will determine on what license you can apply for <clears throat> and qualify for. If you have a legal business in New York, you may be able to apply for a carry business. So keep these things in mind, read through it, and see which one applies for you, and apply. Okay? So that is for New York. We're going to close these windows as we move on to the next state. Or also, let me go to another site that's going to give you a little bit of information. It's called Guns to Carry. A lot of these sites give very good information if you go straight to the statutes and codes that was just listed and then NYPD let me go back there real fast they had them listed here the relevant statutes and, and codes if you look at um, penal law section 400 title 18 you know these different if you go directly to these stat these statutes and codes or the ordinances you'll get the, the, the you go to the horse's mouth, so to speak. So, websites such as this one here, Guns to Carry, go to those statutes, codes, and ordinances and read up on what the law is and they add that information into their own sites. So, these, and my battery is very low. So, members only, I'm sorry, this is going to close or this is going to stop, but we'll continue here on this screen here. So I'm going to let that play until it stops. But for everyone else, when you go into Guns to Carry, and they keep their information pretty much up to date. Let me go to the state gun laws. Go to the state. Okay, we're looking for New York. In New York... Can you carry in a vehicle? Can you carry in a vehicle? See details. I'll explain that one. Must notify officer. You do not have to notify an officer that you are armed. State park carry? No. Gun size and force? You got to see details on that. Open carry? There's no open carry in New York State. Can you carry in a restaurant? Sure. If you have a limited carry, if you have a concealed carry, if you have a uh, permit that allows you to carry on your person, yes, you can walk into certain restaurants and carry. Constitutional carry? No. So, come on. What I wanted to show you, and actually you see the list here? They're giving you the, the laws, where to find them. Uh, what I was going to try to look up was, can you purchase ammo in New York, which is going to be covered in the ammo section? You can, you cannot, well, I'm going to say with a valid permit, no, let me not say that. I don't want to steer anybody in the wrong direction. Which is going to be covered in the ammo section. You can, you cannot... Well, I'm going to say with a valid permit. No, let me not say that. I don't want to steer anybody in the wrong direction. We'll get to ammo in a second. <laughs> we'll get to ammo in a second. Uh, there are certain things that you can and you cannot do. Uh, some retail carry permit required. Okay, here's one. For handguns, a carry permit is required. Yes. For long guns, no. To purchase... Handguns, yes. To purchase long guns, no. Registration of firearm, yes. Long guns, no. Okay, so pay attention to this because they actually, excuse me, go into the law itself. 
the NYPD is not going to be as specific because New York is is one of the most gun restrictive states in the union. New York and New Jersey are both two peas in a pod. So they're going to, they're not going to outline certain things that you can do on their site. They're mostly going to list the things that you can't do. It is up to you to go to the codes that they listed and see what you can and you can't do. What the, what are the variances? Okay? So notice here. Is there a carry permit required for a long gun? No. What is a long gun? It's a shotgun. It's a rifle. Let's stick with rifle. Let's let's stick with rifle. So when we talk about long guns here, we're going to talk about rifle for this for this instance here. But if you go back to New York State and you listen to the types of permits, rifle and shotgun, this permit is issued for the possession and purchase of rifles and shotguns. There's no statutes or codes listed under that. Which there are really no statutes listed under the other types. But again, if you go straight to the NYPD website, they're not going to give you all of the details. You need to read the stats, uh, the, the statute, the code, and ordinance for yourself. Okay? So, give me that little bit of information. Do your own due diligence. Don't just go by the NYPD. The NYPD don't make the laws. The NYPD enforces the laws. So, they're not going to give you all of the information. All right. I've hopped on that point long enough. Let's move on. So, you see this information here, please go do your own due diligence. Uh, there is no um, permit required to open carry a shotgun, um, a rifle, a <laughs> rifle, in, uh, out in the open. In other words, when the Black Panthers uh, moved on to the Capitol or they stormed the Capitol, well, they must have stormed it. But when they arrived at the Capitol with their handguns, they were legally allowed to carry them openly. In New York, let's read this here. Is open carry allowed for handguns? No. For long guns? Yes. You can open carry your long gun. Will it raise a long? Will it raise, you know, yes. When people are not accustomed to seeing people carry a weapon, out in public, it will raise alarms. Should you do it? No. If you're doing it uh, as a protest, like you had certain militias go on the Capitol, you can do it. Should you do it? It's questionable. Should us brothers do it? We got to be very careful. We'd have to do it in very big numbers, and we'd have to give them prior. We should give them prior notice of what we're doing. They may not agree with what we're doing, but they cannot tell us we can't because the law is clear. And before this video is over, I'll actually go to New York Penal Law and show you, in writing, that it's allowed. Because NYPD ain't going to tell you that. Alright, so this is getting ready to stop. Members only, I appreciate you. I'm sorry I didn't plug in the power. I will be better with that uh, in the next video, I promise. Uh, I apologize again. So, this is for New York. And... This site is GunsToCarry.com. Guns Please visit that site and look up your particular state's rules and regulations and your, what you can and you cannot do according to your state. This is updated as of 2019. They haven't passed anything since, so it's still good, you know, good information. But moving right along. So I'm going to pull up New Jersey just to get things set for the next conversation because we're moving on to New Jersey so let's close this out close this out and head to New Jersey now in New Jersey um, well no I didn't set it up I apologize let's do it now we're going to go to a browser and we're going to put in New Jersey firearm permit permit let's do both let's do firearm laws let me see if I can open this in another tab can't let me just pull this up and New Jersey
Let's start with the first one. Gun laws, New Jersey. Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia is somewhat reliable. For the sake of time, we're going to use this one. So firearms, mm, chop of handgun, limits of restrictions. Permits to purchase and own. Okay, in New Jersey, anyone seeking to purchase firearms, one does not need to obtain a firearms purchase. Uh oh, oh, okay, I like, I like it already. New Jersey, anyone seeking to purchase firearms, one does not need to obtain a firearms purchase. Uh oh, oh, okay, I like, I like it already. All right, it's gonna tell you the truth here. <laughs> in New Jersey, anyone seeking to purchase firearms. And then they put the parentheses here. One does not need to obtain a firearms purchaser identif identification card to own, possess, and home, transport firearms to or from authorized target range to a gunsmith for purposes of repair or to the woods or fields of the state of purpose of hunting. Remember this little section there. Um, anyone seeking to purchase items or uh, firearms is required to obtain a lifetime firearm purchase identification card, commonly refer uh, referred to FID, for the purchase of rifles and shotguns. To purchase a handgun, a separate permit is needed from the chief of police of their municipality or the superintendent of state of police or state police if the municipality does not have a local police department. A permit is required for each handgun to be purchased and expires after 90 days, but may be extended for an additional 90 days at the discretion of the chief of police or superintendent of state police. These, like the initial firearms purchase identifier card, identification card, FID, are provided to applicants on a shall issue basis. They require in-depth application questioning, multiple references, and background checks via the State Bureau of Identification and New Jersey State Police. However, authorities do not have discretion and must issue permits to applicants who will satisfy the criteria described in the statutes. Reasons for denial include being convicted of a crime, equivalent to a felony, or disorderly person's offense, equivalent to a misdemeanor. In the case of domestic violence, as of August of 2013, Anyone on the terror watch list is also disqualified. So let's go back because Wikipedia, to my surprise, gave you a chunk of information that you need to read. Um, where should we start? Okay. Like the initial firearms purchaser identification card, FID, are provided to applicants on a shall issue basis. They require in-depth application questioning, multiple references, and background checks via the State Bureau of Identification and New Jersey State Police. However, authorities do not have discretion and must issue permits to applicants who satisfy the criteria described in the statutes. And we really should put the statutes there because understand, they're not going to tell you what they don't want to tell you. It's their website, it's their information, and they'll give you what they want to give you. However, the law is the law, and it tells you here they don't have a discretion to not issue one. So if you are not one of those that fall under the list that, like I said, is going to put on the on our screen, if you don't fall under having a mental uh, disability, you don't have uh, disorderly conduct, uh, not disorderly, um, domestic, domestic violence issues, if you don't have a criminal history, then their hands are tied. They have to give you this permit. <laughs> you get that? All right, so all those are sitting back saying, oh, I'll never get it, and, you know, don't tell yourself no. Let them tell you no. Now, if they do tell you no, Make sure you follow up. Don't just take no and walk away because oftentimes they'll just say no to see how you're going to respond. Oh, he didn't really want it. 
No, let them know you're serious and you exercise your right. That this is your right. And you want it. So stand firm, be respectful, and get with yours. Now, I think we read enough on this topic. Let's go over ghost guns real fast. I'm surprised it's here. New Jersey outlawed the manufacture and sale of ghost guns in 2018 and the transfer and possession in 2019, along with 3D printing guns, including possessing or sharing computer coded computer code that can be used to program the printing of such guns. The law is being challenged in court. So I spoke about this in my last video. And I'm going to leave it there because they'll give something a name that is not really a name. It's private firearms. They cannot tell you what you can and cannot do with your private firearms. Just like there's a, not a debate, but there's an issue going on right now as we speak as the President of the United States is talking about sending federal troops or federal officers into the states to help out with law enforcement activities. And states such as New York and New Jersey is pushing back and saying, no, you can't do that. It's unconstitutional. It is. The federal government cannot step on the state's toes unless there is federal property. So if you have a federal court, like a district court, or if you have federal property in your state, that's where the federal officers can be deployed to, and they can only operate on that federal area, that federal property. They cannot operate in the streets. So, just like the government can make laws stating that its citizens can't do such and such and so, it can't tell private people what to do. So, as long as you're not a citizen, you're not subject to them, subject to their rules and regulations, and stuff, then that doesn't apply to you. What you do in the private, you do in the private, you're allowed to. Now, once you bring it into the public, there's a different story, there's different variances that need to take place, there's things that need to take place. However, it is still your property, and they cannot delegate or regulate what you do with your property, as long as you're not manufacturing it for sale or distribution. So, what they call ghost gun, we're going to call private firearms. If you make your own private firearm, I really highly suggest you put it into your firearms trust. You claim it on your UCC1 or a UCC3 addendum, and that covers you. But private people do private things, and we don't let them call our firearm a ghost gun. We don't even handgun. It's not a handgun. It's a firearm. So their statutes and their codes and their ordinances will outlaw or ban handguns. Or regulate handguns. A handgun is something that is made, manufactured by one of their subsidiaries or one of their uh, franchises. You know, a, a company that is registered to the United States. So you don't have a handgun. You don't have a ghost gun. You have a firearm, and that's what you're going to allow it to be called, or that's what you're going to call it. You're not going to allow them to call it a handgun. So keep that in mind and I'm moving right along. So I've showed you New Jersey. Let's go into New Jersey's laws. Can you carry in a vehicle? Must, uh, uh, must notify officer. No, if you have a concealed weapon or if you have a weapon in your vehicle being transported, you do not have to tell the officer that you have a, a firearm or a weapon. Now let's go back to carry a vehicle. Carry a vehicle. I wouldn't suggest you do this unless you are confident in yourself. Your firearm can be transported in your vehicle. And a lock container and the ammunition must be separate. So if you are operating your vehicle and you have your firearm in there, no one knows if you're going to and from the range, if you're just leaving work. They don't know where you're going until you open up your mouth and you're telling yourself. So this is the instance where they say, shut up. Do not tell on yourself. Do not talk to police. 
Do not answer any questions. Be quiet. Let them piece together your whereabouts or your comings and your goings. And they better be right. But as long as you don't open up your mouth, you are lawful and you're legal. So, can you carry in your vehicle? Sure you can. If you have a permit to carry, concealed weapon, different things, you may be able to carry on your person. If not, it should be in a locked container and separate from the ammunition. Must you notify the officer? Like I said, no. Carry in state parks, you got to see details. So, let's go down to see details. It's going to open up all of these things and we're going to briefly go through them. I'm surprised you guys are still hanging on. That's good. It's going to be cutting off soon. I apologize again. Talking to my members only for those that can't see what's going on. It is dying now. Vehicle carry. Without a permit, without a license, Carrying a loaded handgun inside any vehicle without a permit or license in New Jersey is illegal. Unless the handgun is unloaded and contained and it closed and secured. By any vehicle without a permit or license in New Jersey is illegal. Unless the handgun is unloaded and contained and it closed and securely fastened case or locked in the trunk. And open carry. No, without a permit or license. Open carrying a handgun without or with without or with a permit license in New Jersey is illegal. Open carrying a handgun without or with a permit license in New Jersey is illegal. Your permit license gives you the right to carry a concealed firearm and you must carry it concealed. But no, there is actually no law that bans open carry in New York. There is um, a lot of debate on that. But New Jersey and New York are, again, two peas in a pod, and you want to be very, very careful with some things. So there may not be an actual law, but they will. They will come after you. So, you know, with the shotgun and with the rifle, well, let's go to that list in a second, in a second. Let's go to restaurant carry real fast. Yes, in restaurants that serve alcohol. Yes or no states if you can carry in a restaurant that serves alcohol. Some restaurants may be posted with no gun signs. Check with the staff. If this means just the bar area, if we have indicated a yes, then it should be illegal, should be legal to have a meal without drinking alcohol. The state park carry, blah, 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 blah. Yes, you're permitted to carry in state forest. Um, roadside rest areas. All right, let's go back. We were looking for Reciprocation, we're not going to discuss that in this open carry. I don't know why all the details did not come up like they did for New York. Okay, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to come up as it did for New York. So we're going to move right along. Okay, if you reside in New Jersey, you must apply with the municipal police department where you reside. If the municipality where you reside is serviced by New York State, New Jersey State Police, you must apply at the station which covers your municipality. Out of state residents must apply for the New Jersey State Police Station and must apply to the New Jersey State Police Station nearest their geographical location. Armored car employees must apply with the New Jersey State Police regardless of where they reside. New Jersey does not have laws which allow individuals with valid permits to carry a handgun from other states. New Jersey does not have laws which allow individuals with valid permits to carry a, hand, a handgun from other states to carry a handgun in New Jersey. So they don't reciprocate. They don't honor any other state's carry permit. That's good to know. Processing time is not important. Must notify officer, no weapon signs. We went through all of that. All right. So how do you go about getting your permit? You're going to go online to their portal, Firearms Application Registration System, and you're going to, you know, go to your 
site, went to the New Jersey State Police, and you are looking for your firearms, uh, firearms purchase to permit, all of this must be done online. Now, when you apply, you're going to need the ORI number. It fails me what is the um, what is that acronym for. However, an ORI is the police department's specific number. So if you are, let's say, in Newark, you would call the Newark Police Department and you would get their ORI. RI number. If you're in East Orange, you will call East Orange to get their ORI number. And you fill out the application. Everything is done online. You will go online. I believe this is a portal here. You will go online and you will begin the process. And you have to start with that number. I'll show you here. See, it won't let you go any further unless you put in that department's ORI number. So you could call your precinct, call your um, state barracks or wherever you need to call your local municipality and get that number and let them know you're, you're applying for the firearms purchase identification card and then you can begin the process it walks you through it step by step you're going to need pers two personal references you're going to need to be fingerprinted and they'll give you an option of different locations where you can go to get your fingerprints done and everything is automated so once you do go and get your fingerprints done the system automatically sends it to where it needs to go and you just have to wait the allocated amount of time they will call you up and say your permit is ready and you go pick it up all right so that's new york that's new jersey and let me jump into this real fast before I even touch on Pennsylvania. This is ammo.com. Now, purchasing firearms online, depending on where you live at, may be legal or illegal. In New York and New Jersey, you can purchase firearms. And for argument's sake, for just for this argument, for this here, I, I'll, I go into more detail in private sessions and members only sections. But for argument's sake, you can order a firearm online, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and you can have it sent to your closest federal firearms licensee. That individual or that company can can you know accept your firearm and you can go to them to make the pickup okay in certain instances you can have the firearm or ammunition sent directly to your home you are going to have to do your research on that unless we have a private conversation and I'll fill you in <laughs> but for argument's sake yes you can order a firearm online yes you can order ammunition online most of the time it will need to go through a federal firearms licensee that could be your local gun store that could be a local pawn shop if they have a ffl there you call them up let them know that you're about to order a firearm you're going to have it sent to them you give them a heads up and they'll say oh no problem they will say it's no problem because they get thirty, forty dollars. Sometimes some places charge more, you know, to accept your firearm for you or accept ammunition for you. Now, if you are a permit holder, you may be able to get your ammunition delivered straight to your door. I've given you the information. Please do your due diligence and look up what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> now, for the sake of time, I'm going to leave. Pennsylvania out of this conversation because I've given you a lot of information right now. I hope I've demystified this process for New York and New Jersey. And please, please, please do your own due diligence and look up these this information. I didn't say it, but I wasn't going to give this part out. I usually reserve this for private meetings, but I am definitely going to give this to you and you're welcome. <laughs> If you go to where are we at, 
Oh, wait, let's back up. You go into the New Jersey Revised Statutes, and I went too far back. Let me go back in. You go to the New Jersey Revised Statutes. We're going to the actual horse's mouth. 2C39 deals with firearms. So we're going to scroll down to T 2C39. And when you go down to 2C39, what do you see here? Private people do private things. Let's go into exemptions. When you go into exemptions, I'm going to go straight down to it for you. I'm going to read it to you, and I'm going to go back up and show you something else. Let's go here first. Now, wait, we're in exemptions, right? Exemptions? You're going to scroll down to B, subsections A, B, and C of NJS 2C39-5 does not apply to. What is NJS 2C39? You'd have to go up to, did I close it? I think I closed it. No, I didn't close it. It's down here. NJ 2C39. Five. Here we go. Unlawful possession of weapons. It goes through the handguns. It goes through the rifles, shotguns. It goes through uh, explosive devices, everything. It says if you're unlicensed, if you're unqualified, uh, all these different things are located in 2C39-5. Got it? I'm going to close that now. And we're going back here. Subsections A, B, and C of 239-5, and I closed that too fast, I apologize, because you want to see what A, B, and C is. So let's go back up. Let's open this up. Paste and go. 239-C. 2C-39. Dash five. Okay, A, B, and C. Let's go through A, B, and C real fast. Unlawful possession of weapons, a machine gun, any person who knowingly has in his possession a machine gun or instrument or device except adaptable for use as a machine gun without being licensed to do so as provided in NJ 2C 58-5 is guilty of a crime of the second degree. B, handguns, any person who knowingly has in his possession any handgun, including any antique handgun, without first having obtained a permit to carry the same as provided in NJ2C58-4, is guilty of a crime of the third degree. If the handgun is in the nature of an air gun, spring gun, pistol, or other weapon of similar nature in which the propelling force is a spring, elastic band, carbon dioxide, compressed or other gas or vapor, air or compressed air, or is ignited by compressed air, and ejecting a bullet or missile smaller than three-eighths of an inch in diameter with sufficient force to injure a person. Otherwise, it is a crime of the second degree. And C, rifles and shotguns. Any person who knowingly has in his possession any rifle shotgun without first having first obtained a firearms purchase identification card in accordance with the provisions of NJS 2C58-3 is guilty of a crime of the third degree. Two. Unless otherwise permitted by law, any person who knowingly has in his possession any loaded rifle or shotgun is guilty of a crime of the third degree. D, other weapons. Any person who knowingly has in his possession any other weapon under circumstances not manifestly appropriate for such lawful uses as it may have is guilty of a crime of the fourth degree. So that was A, B, C, and I went down to D unnecessarily. So everything that you just read, is now covered in this one where it says exemptions. Go down to 11. Subsections A, B, and C, the ones I just read of NJ2C 39-5, do not apply to, does not apply to a law enforcement officer employed by a governmental agency outside of the state of New Jersey while actively or actually engaged in his official duties, provided, however, that he has first notified the superintendent or chief law enforcement officer of the municipality 
or the prosecutor of the county in which he is engaged in, or <clears throat> a, a licensed dealer in firearms and his registered employees during the course of their normal business while traveling to and from their place of business and other places for the purpose of demonstration, exhibition, or delivery in connection with the sale, provided, however, that the weapon is carried in a manner specified in subsection G of this section. I am not going to go down to subsection G. I am going to go to this next page. Applying for a federal firearms license. If you want to obtain all the benefits of holding a federal firearms license, you will need to apply for FFL license. The benefits include the freedom to buy and sell firearms, guns, pistols, it should say as, it says are, as you please. The opportunity to earn extra cash as a firearms dealer. The chance to save up to 30% on your purchases of guns and ammunition. Eliminate the FFL transfer fees and hassle on your firearm buys. Protection against firearm restrictions as the gun laws may change in the future. So this is the reason why you should apply for your federal firearms license because you are not subject to those laws and statutes and codes that I just mentioned. You are welcome, you are welcome, and you are welcome. And I might cut off the comments on this video because I know I just blew someone's head straight off their shoulders. So I am ending this conversation, this video now, and there will be another part. And hopefully what I've missed in these last two parts, three parts, I will cover in the next part. So I thank you for listening. I thank you for watching. I thank you for being a part of the experience. This is Bud Brownsville, demystifying firearm purchasing and firearm ownership. And I hope I've helped someone. Peace and power, everybody.